Hello there. Quick update on the print shift. Basically put in a little retractable cable. I also want to do a slower video of the install, touch on the finer points, so if you actually wanted to build your own, the print shift 5.1, all the parts will be up on the GitHub, I'll throw the link down below. You should be able to after watching this and, you know, printing out the parts. So, I'm not going to redo the rods. The only weird part in here is this little sprag clutch. They're a buck a piece, but it's a one-way, um, basically a one-way bearing. Rolls freely the back. Let's see. Nothing moves. But when it moves forward, it slides apart. The old version, this little string, engages it. So you can see now when we move the, axis, the Y axis, we are advancing the bed, that remotion. Go ahead and get this guy off. Hop the, uh, So inside here we have some 8mm bearings, and these are connected on with uh, just an M3 screw into a square nut. This screw is pushing against the bed rail in order to tension the bed. So there's actually four tensioners, I only installed the front two as tensioners because it seemed like yeah, no need for the rear. When you run the belt for a long time, you'll notice it start tracking, so you can increase tension on one side or other to make sure your bent belt goes straight. Go ahead and get this guy off. And the more crucial items drop in T-nuts. You see that if we focus on this guy, So this curve here means that you can drop it into a you can drop it into the channel and then rotate it into place. This is a rack and pinion that you can turn on and off. So normally you'll slide smoothly over the top, attach the side. The other thing we've added here is a little guide. Oops, goes on this side. So this will flow under your printer and up to the motor for actuation. This is returned by a spring, little hexagonal hole on each. Just a simple press fit. In order to keep this spinning smoothly, three in one oil. I just put a drop on each side for the mating parts. You can see it's still dry on the bottom, but as we rotate that, it's farther and farther. Anytime you want parts to slide smoothly against each other, this is actually printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Fairly fine. Not crazy, but it's in PLA plastic for the best dimensional stability, rigidity. So, instead of just the string, retractable badge holder. We're going to have to cut this part off to route it through the tubes. So you absolutely need something to keep this from going inside. These things are maybe 50 cents a piece. They're ridiculously cheap, but if you lose the string, they're just glued shut. It's little plastic clips in there, but you can open up, get your string back out, but it's really not worth the effort. So, I'm going to be very careful feeding this through to not do that sort of thing. And I have a bunch of these, so. Tube cutter, not really necessary. I made these cool little feet 
TPU, so vibration dampening. And it's the same thing as the T-nut there, where it can slip in the slot and rotate. And that little nub keeps it in the slot so that it won't pull itself out. Basically, I was noticing this swaying a lot when I was at Earth. I'm going to use these to replace these stick-on feet. Thread this in until you get the length cut correctly. Basically just there. And this length is not critical, it's just to keep things from getting caught up. And this is, you know, your fancy Capricorn type tolerance tubing, but it's just a, the shortest piece I have lying around, so I'm using up some stuff that is too short for most of the printers of the world. But any PTFE tube will work. These holes are all sized for four millimeter tubing, which is pretty much what everything, what everyone uses. So I don't know that I want to set this length yet. I'm going to try and tie this such that it actually runs out of length when the motor is spun up to the top. Not a good way to measure that or a quick knot, but and that is basically the entire underside install. I'm going to add two more feet into the uh, rear corners. That keeps the machine nice and stable. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to put another foot for the back there. Also made this nice part. I had a really good idea where I could rotate this to adjust the length. That's just a way to attach this guy nicely. But if you spin this, then the string has to wrap around the motor, so it doesn't really work. I think we need a better way to tension the string down here, or to tie it to length properly. Maybe on those little boat anchor type dealies. But, not yet. So to keep this from rocking, We'll slot around over the zip tie. And these are skinny but six inch zip ties. Eighth inch, maybe. A little extra security, never hurt anybody. The point of using these plastic things in the PTFE tube is just to route the uh, string where it can't get caught on anything. Because if your string gets caught while you're trying to eject, you're either going to dump your part out early or fail to eject the part. Winding the motor all the way up to the top, so we get an idea of where we want this ejector to be. And adding this clamp here means I can now drop this down and get some slack line here, make it easier to tie. Why not, so. Way to set a knot, dab a little super glue on it. Put 
so we can pop that guy back on. Put the tension in there. Just pulling a little more, so I think I might need to beef up this auto return spring, which is pretty easy to do since that's just a thick or a thin spiral. You can actually just make it a little taller, call it good. But basically, just wanted to show full install. It's working well enough, but could work a little better. So, I repeat one of these. Let's get a test print going while we do. See if it's still happy. With the stiffer spring, works pretty well perfectly, ejecting pretty consistently. I'm very happy with this, I'll get all the files published up, and uh, thanks for watching. Happy printing.